What's going on guys? This is Kazi. Welcome to another video and a lot's been going on. Uh, my mom had a major, major heart surgery. So all of us brothers had to fly out, be with my parents right now. So I'm in their basement, as you can see. So this is not the Cosman studio, but you know, the show must go on. So I've been kind of just dying inside. I want to create some content. So I uh, came up with an idea of like a bunch of little videos that I'm going to put out in the next couple of weeks. So uh, that way we're still connecting and you guys know that, you know, all is well and everything is great and I can do what I do best, which is share what I know and try to help as many people as possible. If you're a beginner filmmaker who wants to make their work stand out, color grading is one of the most effective ways to do that. If you're coming from Premiere Pro or Final Cut 10, then looking at a node-based software like Resolve will just confuse the heck out of you. In this free training, you're not only going to learn everything about nodes, you will also learn to build the perfect node tree regardless of the project that you're working on. I will end the session with an extended Q&A. These questions came from you guys. Click the link in the description to sign up for this free training. And guys, I will be changing this webinar soon, so you should take advantage of it and watch it while it is still available and it is online. So link is in the description. If you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and let's roll the intro. All right, so let's jump into it. This is my hero frame uh, for the shot that we're gonna be working on. We're gonna be creating a old film look, um, but this is not necessarily a B-movie look, okay? That's another video that I'm gonna put out soon. Just think of like Machete or something like that. So it's gonna be that kind of look uh, that's gonna come out in, a, in the next couple of weeks. But here, we're gonna create sort of like an elegant, classic old film look. It won't have as many scratches and dirt and things like that, but it's, it'll still be clean, but will have the DNA of our old film uh, look, okay? So uh, we're gonna build the node tree as we go. So the first one, I'm gonna keep it here. I'm not gonna touch it. This is gonna be for my white balance. And let's just go ahead and call it that. Now I'm working with my laptop. So I customized some of my keyboard layout. So that's why I don't get confused. I just hit tab and it went to my label, but you can go under here, keyboard customization, and you can change that. You can just type in label here and then click down here, click on this guy and just give it whatever key you want. So I gave it tab and that's how I have this set up, okay? So that's my first node. Now I'm gonna do option S to create a new node. We're gonna bring this down and this is going to be used as our CST. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna find my color space transform because I'm gonna be using a film print emulation and to properly convert it, I'm gonna be using a Cineon output gamma. So I'm gonna keep that here. I'm gonna go in here and change this to Cineon film log and it looks kind of weird, but just, you know, bear with me. I'm going to call this CST and then in here, I'm going to go ahead and pick my favorite LUT and uh, we're going to go to our LUT pack that's provided by DaVinci Resolve film looks. And the one I'm going to be using is 2383 D55. Okay. So I'm going to throw that on and this is where we're at. Let's buy some real estate. So I'm going to put this right there and, uh, if I wouldn't have applied the Cineon conversion, everything would have looked like that. Super crushed, super weird. Look at the black points down here. But since I applied that conversion, everything is looking proper. So if I take do these two, it has the film look without really crushing everything, okay? So now what I wanna do after that, this is where the fun begins. So let's call this FPE, Film Print Emulation. And then this is going to be our OFX. This is where the film look effect gonna come into play. So I'm just gonna scroll down. I'm gonna grab my, uh, is it, I think it's uh, film damage or analog damage. Let's, okay, so it's film damage. Drop that on. Now let's go through these parameters because this looks pretty cheesy if we leave it like that. We're not going for that. We're not going for Charlie Chaplin. We're going for a bit, uh, something a bit more classy, okay? A bit better than that. So I'm gonna go under my dirt and I just wanna take that out. I don't want any dirt. I want to disable my scratches. I don't want scratches. I want it clean. And then after that, what I want to do is under my vignette, I want to kind of ease off that. Okay. It's too much. So I'm going to go under my uh, geometry factor. I'm going to open it up. So see, now we're just really creating a film texture, if you will. So what makes it that? If I pop this open so you guys can see what's going on. And if we go closer, 
look at what it's doing. This looks super digital, super, you know, shot with red or 4K, 6K, whatever have you. That's not how film used to look. It was very soft like down to this point, okay? Because we are going for like a really old school film look. Now, this is a bit much for you to handle. Obviously, you can kind of split the difference. So now we still have that character without making it too cheesy. And that's the whole point of these parameters, okay? People always ask me like, hey, how do you create a film look or a VHS look and it looks so good, what's the sauce? And you have to mess with the parameters. You can't just throw it like default and call it Okay, I'm done, let's move on. Because if I show you how it was before to like what this, how much of a difference the little parameters we changed made is, that's it, it's game over, okay? So we're not done yet, we're just getting started. We're gonna do a few more things here. I'm just gonna call this look and uh, let's do a few things. Let's kind of dirty it up, push it. So I'm gonna take my saturation, kind of go places with it. So now it just has so much more personality I'm gonna take my lift, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit just to kind of dirty it up, you know? I'm thinking moonlight or something like that. I'm just really adding some character into my footage right now, so even something like this. Then I'm gonna go under my gain and I'm gonna warm it up a little bit overall. I keep it on the orange side, not necessarily red. So even something like that, I'm kind of liking it. Can we give it more saturation, just really push it and then kind of dial it back? You know, I'm liking it. It's just giving it a lot of personality, okay? It's gonna be up to you what you wanna do with it, but like Jill Bogdanovich is one of those colors that just plays with color so much. She just gives everything so much juice. Umbrella Academy, Joker, think of any uh, work from her. And I'm just a huge fan of hers. So, you know, I I'm inspired to always go in that direction to just kinda get that from my image, just make it come to life. Now what I wanna do here is I'm gonna create, I'm gonna hit option L for a layer mixer. I wanna go in here, I just want to select in my qualifier this yellow. And uh, that way we can just start creating a little bit more of a teal and orange, have a bit more control over it. So I'm gonna open it up a little bit and then I wanna go in here in my gamma and just like really push it. Something like that and now we're seeing it's really coming to life. And one more thing that I can do is I can go under my contrast lighter here and kind of crank it, right? So then it just really, really pops. And uh, something like that, you know, exaggerated, it's totally fine. Now we can always go back in here and under our look and we can dial back the saturation a little bit if we want to since we're like really pushing our one dominant color in this node, in node number seven. And then in node number six, what I want to do is uh, it's basically going to affect everything that is not yellow. That's how the layer mixer works. So I'm going to take my, uh, let's do, I'm going to do two things and see which one I like more. So I'm going to take my gamma. I want to kind of affect the entire image and see what that does. And let's make this bigger. And I feel like that little green that just sits in the bones is kind of cool, but at the same time, I don't know, let's take lift and take it there a little bit because I just really don't want my black points to be 100% proper. I want it to have a little bit of that green and now it does. Like if I just really go here and do this is before, this is after. I mean, this is so subtle, you're not gonna notice it on YouTube probably, but trust me, makes a difference. Okay, just very, very tiny. What happens if we push it a little bit? So then you guys can actually see the difference. So. Something like that, right? I'm gonna do a really slow before and after. That's one of the critiques that I got on YouTube. I, I do it really fast and it's hard for you guys to see. So I'm gonna call it out first and I'm gonna do before and after. So this is after, here's before. So just notice this area, this area right here, and I'm gonna do after, before. Again, one of those things that I personally like, it's gonna depend on your taste, if you like it or not. Let's just leave it for now. If we have to make changes, we will. I'm, I will call this look adjustment. I will call this yellow, okay? And then right here, what we need to do and must do is our glow effect because without that, this look is not complete. You might think that it's very juiced and everything is great, but just wait till I throw the glow effect on there and then mess with the parameters and how it will come to life. So I'm gonna go under my soft light and uh, I'm just gonna start cranking that up and I'm gonna 
I'm gonna mess with this and see what's happening. So if I make it bigger, like look at that, right? I mean, it, it just, it really does create this crazy, crazy effect. But obviously now we can come in here and again, play with saturation and just like really dial it back because we don't wanna overdo anything. So that was the purpose, right? We made certain changes that led to creating a very distinct look and now we have all the control. That's another reason why you wanna have multiple nodes and name them properly and have a proper structure so you can easily go back and dial it up or dial it back or split the difference, whatever it is that you wanna do. So this is where we are right now. It is a pretty sophisticated look if you ask me. I'm gonna go in my white balance and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna click on the side dropper and I'm gonna select this white area and it just cleans up my whites a little bit. I actually absolutely love the difference that it's making. It's taking this weird red, uh, red out of the image, which I appreciate a lot and I feel like gives it very much of a film look. So that is the effect that's gonna stay here. I wanna go under my OFX and I wanna look at some of these and see if there's anything that I wanna mess with or if I wanna leave it as is. So temp shift is happening, like see how it's getting greener on the edges. So let's start to mess with that and see what's happening. So where do we wanna keep this? If I do before, you know, I kind of like it warm. Personally, I kind of like it where it is, how warm it gets. I like that. So I don't want to mess with that. Let me go in my vignette and see what else is happening that we might not want or where do we want the effect of the vignette. And then let's open this up. Like we said, we don't want any factoring here, geometry factoring. So this is where we are right now. And uh, I can't think of anything else to do to this image to like really, really bring it to life. So I'm gonna take all of these. I'm gonna kill it. Obviously we don't necessarily need, you know, grain because we applied the film effect, but you know what? I don't think that they're applying grain here. They're applying the texture to the image to like really get that feel of the film, old film, but I don't think they're applying grain. So then I will drop this on. And this time I'm gonna use 16 millimeter. I'm gonna go pretty aggressive here, okay? So I'm gonna do 16 millimeter, 500T. So it's pretty thick and we should be able to see it. Once again, I'm gonna have to zoom in for you guys to like really see what's happening. Maybe even closer. Just look at right here. This is after, this is before. Pretty clean. And then this is after. Okay, so it is making a difference. How much do we want to exaggerate is completely up to us. I think this is a good balance where we're sitting right now. I'm gonna kill all of this. I wanna start with what we had to where we ended up. Obviously, it started with our film print emulation. If we're gonna be creating a film look, this is the best way to go about it, to like really embed that DNA into your look. Then I did a CST conversion, Cineon conversion, to like really make everything look normal than this crushed thing that happens when you just apply a LUT without it. Then I dropped on the film damage effect and then manipulate the F out of it to like really get it where I want it to be. And then we really saturated our image, dirty it up a little bit. I grabbed my yellows using the layer mixer to like exaggerate the one dominant color that we have. And then I grabbed the complementary color and again, just dirty it up a little bit. I don't want it to be pure black. I don't want that. I just want to push it a little bit then the glow just changed everything. I told you, like up until here, we thought we were making a huge difference going from this to that. But I feel like this is where a lot of the people um, just leave their looks and then they're just not the same. They're not the same. Okay, so after doing this, just look at the difference and how there's a gentle roll off, all of that that's happening. And then I went into my grain and added tons of grain here. Now, somebody might be sitting somewhere going, okay, this is looking a bit too dark. Um, and if that's the case, we also did our white balance to really pull it out. And if that's the case, it's looking a bit too dark. You can obviously go under, um, you know, click right here. I would suggest this. And I would say create another node here. And then you can bring up your image a tiny bit. And the way I would do that is that we can just go in our custom curves and I'll just grab it and pop it up a little bit, you know, not too much. And I would see what is happening. Like, am I liking this a little bit better? 
And, you know, to be honest with you, it's not bad. I feel like keeping my image somewhere around here might not be a bad idea, okay? And then this could be my global adjustment. And I can leave it like that. And now let's check out the final look in full screen. All right, so hopefully you guys had a blast. Like I said, very specific look. And this stuff that I did here, this is the least amount of stuff you need to do to really give it that character. Um, I was keeping my note tree very tight. But again, the sequence of the node tree matters, how you lay everything out and label it matters. All of that and then some is covered in my webinar that I will be taking off and will be expiring soon. So if you want to check it out, link is down below. Drop a comment. Let me know if there's any uh, content suggestions that you might have. And guys, don't forget, work hard, get obsessed, get possessed. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you